Um, first of all, I'm really uncomfortable in front of the camera, so bear with me. I will continually keep you looking. Keep you looking? I'll keep looking at the wrong place. Um, so, hi. Um, this is a new series of videos. Um, it's unlike anything I've ever really done before, but it's something I feel that will hopefully be quite useful to a lot of people watching. So I did a post on socials a few weeks ago, basically about the business side of nails. Um, and I got some, there was a few comments on the post, but more I got was private messages. So I thought I would kind of compile together the messages, kind of set into themes and then answer as many questions as possible. Um, I was going to do it as a live, but then I thought maybe doing it as a pre-recorded video might be better. So, um, look forward to my amazing editing. Um, so first off, we're going to look at business plans. Okay, so this is pretty much an essential thing for any business at any point in the business. So when I first started out with Miss Lucy, I went through the Prince's Trust, which is in England, but you can access um, all the forms and templates and stuff anywhere in the world. Um, if you are within the pri uh, price, the age range to be helped with the Prince's Trust, I would really encourage you encourage you to look into their enterprise program. It really helped me and it really did help mould my business at the early days. But what I took away from this, you know, I took a lot, but a big part of it is about your business plan. So before even starting out, I created a business plan and then every year I review that business plan and I see where the business is going, how I want to progress it, have I achieved what I wanted to, what have I learned, and how to make it better. So a business plan is a fantastic place to start to give you an idea of what you actually want from your business and what you need from your business. Now I'm not going to go through an entire business plan today, um, a lot of what I'm going to be doing in these videos is pointing you in the right direction. Um, running your own business is going to take a lot of hard work and dedication it's it's totally worth it i love being my own boss but you have to have the drive to go and do a lot of the stuff for yourself so the prince's trust i'll put a link to the prince's trust below but you need to go and have a little look on that website there are templates for how to fill out a business plan there's a business plan like a blank one that you can edit in now you don't have to follow it word for word, but it's just really useful for you to get an idea of where you want your business to go, the kind of business you want to create and what you want from it. So I have got in front of me the business plan from the Prince's Trust, and I am just going to go through some of the key points um, just to how it will help you get an idea of your business. So the first one is all about you. So it's about the owner's background. So there will look at not only your qualifications, so your training, your ability to run the business, um, it will also look at why you want to run your own business. So it, it then helps clarify in your own head what you're trying to achieve out of all of this. Next it's what are you going to sell? You need to be quite clear what you're selling, <laughs> obviously. Are you selling a service? Are you selling a product? Are you selling both? So for most nail takes, you're selling a service, but you can also sell products as well, things like cuticle oils, stuff like that. There's like little add-ons you can do in there. So you need to get a clear idea of exactly what you're selling and how you're going to be selling it. Next, a business plan will let you look, will make you look at who your customers are. In the beauty industry, I think it's really hard to say my customer is X, Y, Z because I mean, everyone gets the nails done. You know, people get it for occasional nails or you get your regular ladies or a lot of my ladies, they come in because it's literally the two hours every three weeks. They get peace and quiet away from their kids. <laughs> but you've got to look at that. You've got to think about what your, who your customers are. Um... And part of that is the market research. So it says, do you know what it's like out there? So that gives you an idea of like test trading. So while you're training or while you're just starting out, you can get an idea of the kind of people you're going to be attracting and what they want and what they need from their nail tech or from their beauty salon. So this kind of, it, 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 it lightly touch on your competitors and I think these two combine together quite well um like your the kind of customer you're trying to attract will then affect the kind of competitors you have so a lot of people I find some just rolling around in my chair there so a lot of people I find when they talk about oh their competitors or why they can't make the business work and stuff like that they're like oh I'm surrounded by NSS very quickly an NSS is a non-standard salon this is not necessarily a nail bar it has nothing to do with race so before anyone goes on about the 
whatever nail bars down the road. It has nothing to do with race. A non-standard salon, it's a salon that works outside of the standard practices. So if you have gone to get your nails done from anyone and they have not completed a client consultation form, they're an NSS. They are working without insurance because your insurance states you must complete a client consultation form. If they're using cheap products off eBay, they're an NSS. And it's very easy to assume that because it's a nail bar, oh, they're bad. Oh, but oh, my friend does it in her house, right? Okay, does she have insurance? Is she qualified? Oh no, she only does friend's nails though. It's an NSS, it's just as bad. So if you're looking at your competitors, this is one that I'm really gonna go into with your business plan because you want to make sure you're looking at the right people that you're in competition with. I never looked at NSS and I never will look at NSS. I had a customer in the other day, I was removing a set of NSS nails and I did just say, oh, how much are they charging these days? Um, I don't charge much more, so maybe I should increase my prices because I am far superior to those nail bars. Um, and that's not me being big headed, I am. I'm well educated, I'm insured, uh, I invest in my training and my business regularly and I use high quality products, which is everything they don't. Um, so yeah, it was interesting to know, but when you're looking at your competitors, I would look at other salons, other mobile nail techs, other people that are doing it properly, look at their standard of work and go, yeah, I wanna be as good as that. So that's where you look at your competitors, not at the NSS, I think. If you just don't ignore them because they're a fact but i think the important thing is to educate your customers on why not to go to them in a non-aggressive way i feel like i'm rambling a bit there um payment a good part of the business plan is how are people going to pay you so obviously cash is the easiest um but i would really really encourage you to look into how people can pay you by card now i have pretty much predominantly always been cash i had a paypal machine when i first started out but it used to annoy me so much i did get rid of it in the last few months, I've now got an iZettle machine, and I have to say, I love it. Um, I've got no monthly charges. I think the machine itself was only 20 quid. It hit, it syncs up really easily to my phone, and I get charged like 2%. So from, I think I did £150 worth of sales the other day, so I lost £3. For the, for the ease of your customers, that's a charge I'm willing to absorb in the business. So definitely think about how your customers are going to be able to pay you. Um, that needs to be thought of. And again, the business plan will help you get an idea of that, help you do your research for it. The business plan will also help you work out your costings. Now, it's very easy to think, if I do a set of nails and charge £35, I get £35 in my pocket. And I do think a lot of customers think that as well. So they think, God, you can make a good amount of money. Like my basic is £40 for a set of nails. And I get people sit opposite me and they'll be here for an hour and a half, two hours. And they're like, God, don't you make a lot of money? No, not really. <laughs> um, because about half of that for me, because I invest so much in my training and so much in my products, about half of that is profit. So that works out at £10 an hour for me. I think for a skilled artist, £10 an hour, people are doing pretty good. Um, so you've got to think about your costings in there as well. So every set you do, you've got to find out how much that set has cost you. Now, the majority of suppliers, you will be able to contact them and say from this size pot of acrylic and this size pot of monomer, how many sets of nails will I approximately get out of that? So you can get a good idea of your costings for tools and equipment. But remember, you need to replenish those tools and equipment. You may need to update. You need to expand your range, things like that. Also, I would encourage everyone to put a little bit aside every month or every client for your training, for your personal development. It will really help with your business. But we'll touch on that more later. I'm literally just going through the business plan at the moment, just touching on a few key areas. How much money will you make? This is a big thing in the business plan. You need to create your survival budget. Now your survival budget, because you're a sole trader, well, I'm assuming you're a sole trader because you're just starting out with her, but your survival budget will include things like your rent, your council tax, your um, utility bills, food bills, clothing allowance, if you've got pets, um, if you've got children. Sorry, I've got pets, not children. I'm not saying that pets are more important than children. It's just in my head, they are my children. So sorry. <laughs> if you've got children, if you have pets, put it that way. Um, yeah, so it will literally, you have to know exactly how much money you need coming in every week, every month, however you want to do it, to be able to keep your, your family and your lifestyle afloat. So if you like going out for dinner twice a week, you need to make sure you're earning enough money to be able to do that. So as long as you've got your survival budget and then like your funding budget, then you know exactly how much you need to be earning. And then you can work backwards for how much you need to be getting in with customers. 
In a business plan, you can also do a cash flow forecast. I must admit, in my first year, I had done a cash flow forecast. And when I went to panel with Princess Trust, which is basically I completed the business plan. I did a week's course with um, Princess Trust and each day looks at a different area of running a business. And then at the end of it, I went to panel. I think about two weeks later, I went to panel, which is when you have I think it's three or four of um, their... I think they're mentors or they're basically people that are run successful businesses come in it's like dragon's den but nowhere near as terrifying it's fine it's not it's not scary like that because if you, i went i got a loan from the prince's trust i think it was like 1200 1500 i can't remember but they charge it such ridiculously low interest rates but you've got to keep up the payments blah 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 but anyway so i went to panel and in my cash flow forecast they said that i was being very pessimistic now i agree that i was <laughs> but i didn't really know it was an entirely new area for me. I did. I knew nothing about nails. I knew nothing about whether they'd be successful in my area, whether it'd be popular. Where I live, it's very rural um, and we're right by the coast. So half of my catchment is the sea, which does make building a business a little bit harder. Um, but I think I've just hustled that a little bit more to make sure it's been successful. Um, so my cash flow forecast, basically, I was like, I want to attract one new customer. Four months down the line, I will be doing X amount of customers a week um so yeah so a cash flow forecast can be really helpful to give you an idea and something to work to to go right i need to get however many new customers a week or i need to attract this or that to be able to keep up with my survival budget then you need to think about your cost table so you need to think about how much everything costs to keep the business running i'm going to touch in, on this in later um subjects so you've got to think about all the things that you need to keep the business running so if you're from home you know you've got to keep it lit heated you've got to make sure you've got your equipment everything's working stuff like that if you're mobile you've got to make sure you've got the correct insurance for your car so that if it breaks down you must have a car to use so you must be able to have a courtesy car you must have business insurance for your car to say i use this for business so that it's covered things like that and then with a business plan you also have to have a what if it doesn't work out you need to have a backup plan and you need to have um, a way of supporting yourself if the business doesn't work so that's pretty much it for the business plan um i would again i would really encourage you to go on the princess trust website they have um like a pdf going through it all with loads of key points and they have blank templates for you to fill in i do one every year okay so half of the stuff i've ignored this year so who are you what is your experience i don't need to do that every year but then i do kind of have a look at my i do need to have a look at my cash flow for next year what am i wanting to do blah blah, blah stuff like that so yeah so i would highly recommend every business start with a good business plan so you've got your business plan you've got an idea in your head of how you're going to create this business how you're going to build it next thing is to consider your training and insurance kind of a connected but mm, yeah so if you did your basic training i did my basic training with essential nails so it was an online course i found they were very thorough i think my filing routine and my shaping and everything has come from them instilling a certain way of doing everything in certain ways they were really good in other ways they were quite lacking it's very dated um, I liked the fact that I had to complete X amount of sets. It did rely a lot on honesty because you could easily just say you've done 30 sets and just send in, I think you're supposed to send the 10th of every set, like 60 sets, and you could just do 30 and send every other set in. That's fine. They didn't pass me the first time. I liked that. I liked training with someone who wouldn't pass me straight away just because I'd done the course and put my... Um, final set in. I liked that. I like thinking, no, okay, good, right, I will get better and I will, and I felt I earned my qualification that way. Um, if you have done really thorough training and you have finished your training and you're like, I am ready, like I felt when I left Essential Nails, I hadn't really worked on people, I'd only worked on a practice hand, but I felt ready. I was like, I can do this. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this. If you've finished your initial training and you've come away going, oh God, and a lot of people do, then you probably started having your eyes opened up to the world of nails. You'll be joining support groups on Facebook, things like that. Um, there are loads of good support groups. There are loads of terrifying ones as well. Obviously, I would encourage you to join mine, link below. Um, but there are other good um, support networks. What I would really encourage you to do is when it comes to like basic training, stuff like that, try and choose one that isn't too brand biased. And also watch out for the pitchy ones. 
pardon my language, but some of them are savage. You want, but you want supportive, but not too nice. Like sometimes when you see people going, I've just changed, what do you think of my nails? And I look at them and I go, wow. <laughs> and I do think that is someone who has literally done one set of nails, not someone who is qualified and ready to work on people. Now, what I like when I see these posts is when you get people commenting helpful things, just going, you know, oh, work on this bit. Oh, this is a good thing. You should watch this person on YouTube. Or, oh, have you thought about training with this person for skill building? Stuff like that. Helpful things. Be very wary of those groups that have the participants that are just like, I can't believe you're You don't need any of that. None of that. I think it's very important to make sure that when you join the groups, have a little look through and see the responses and then see how the admins handle those people, because then they're the groups you want to be part of. Um, through those groups, you'll also find out of people to train with. Now, for me, I think the best thing you can do is train with people whose work you love. I have always trained with people who I see them do a set of nails and I'm like that. I want to be able to do that. And they're the people you train with. Train with people that you go wow their work wow like Costco I'm not trained with her I just can't afford it oh, I can't um but yeah you you need to make sure that it's people that inspire you um I think one of the worrying things I see a lot is when I say to people oh who did you do your initial training with like when they come in for a skill builder or whatever with me and they're like oh so and so and I was like oh what's their work like well, I've never seen it okay same as with my horse I ride with people who I, I train with people who when I see them ride I'm like I want to be able to do that. I love the way they ride. They're a quiet rider, they're, they're a kind rider, or, or they're a very effective rider, you know? And I think that's what I want to learn. It's exactly the same with nails. You've got to look at people and go, I love the way they do nails. I want to learn from them. It's as simple as that. So if you have got good training and you're ready to go, bam, get out there, do it. If you think your initial training wasn't so great, then start looking. Open your eyes to this amazing industry that we're in because there is a lot of education and a lot that you can learn from it. You've just got to, again, put the work in. So your insurance. Okay, you need to make sure that you are insured for the work that you do. If you have got an acrylic qualification, then you need to make sure that you are insured to do acrylics. You need to be very careful. A lot of people have got just an acrylic qualification and then they're using a gel top coat in all of their services. You're not actually insured to use that <laughs> because you've done no training. If you haven't got a gel polish certificate um, or a hard gel certificate, depending on the type of gel top coat, you're not insured <laughs> officially. So make sure that you both have the qualifications and the insurance to cover you for everything. Your insurance should also cover, I think it's really important, if you're working from home, your home insurance must be aware <laughs> because if something happened, if there was a fire in my home and my home burnt down, I am then unable to work as well. <laughs> and all of my work equipment is in there. So I have got my home insurance, yeah, it's more expensive, but it goes through as a business expense, the majority of it, because I have had to pay for a more expensive home insurance because I work from home. Um, the same as if you are mobile, as I've touched on previously, if you are mobile and you have a car, then your car insurance must be for business. Full stop. I And I am one of those people that you'll find I'm very much, do it right. Don't cut corners, just do it right. So when I was mobile, my car insurance was a little more expensive, it wasn't too much more, but it was for business and personal use. One day my car broke and I had about eight customers in that day. So my car got recovered, taken to the garage and I got a courtesy car. That was it. I think for my first customer, I just said, I'm going to be half an hour late. And I messaged all my customers just said, really sorry, car's breaking down in the courtesy car now. I'm just going to be about half an hour late for everyone's appointments today. Fine. I didn't lose any income that day. And I know I've got a car bill coming up, but I didn't lose any income. Now, if, I had just had normal insurance and I hadn't got insisted on a courtesy car on that, I'd have lost, I mean, eight people. That was like 150 quid, 200 quid, depending on what they have done. So always make sure that you have the correct insurance. It's the same as if you're working out of a salon or anything like that, you must make sure the salon has the correct insurance needed. Um, there's nothing more frustrating and you do, I mean, it's so sad when you see it, but you see these, these nail sets like, oh, my car was broken into and all of my nail stuff was stolen. Your car insurance will cover that because you should have adequate car insurance so your car insurance will pay out for that 
or your business insurance will pay out for that or if your house gets broken into or you've got um a shed in your garden that you a shed that's not the word isn't it a cabin a little wood lodge in your garden for the aisles or it got broken into and, and loads of my stuff was stolen your business insurance should cover that yes business insurance can be a pain in the ass to pay out but your business insurance will cover it that is important always have the correct insurance so following on from that the insurance is making sure if you're working this is mainly for people working from home this one is make sure your landlord or your mortgage company are aware you are running a business from home now every i rent and every time i look to move the first thing i say is i run a business from home is this okay yep it's fine some people won't let you do it now if you are renting you must let your landlord know that you're running business from home and check they're okay with it it will slightly change their insurance i have always whenever i've had that with my landlords i've just said any difference let me know and i will pay it you also need to declare your business in the property now if you're in a room like i am this is a salon it cannot be changed at night i cannot put a bed in here there's no room so i am officially um liable for business rates because i'm a small business and honestly this room is a box i don't have to pay business rates i always get business rates relief but i've done it all officially and i've done it all properly i have gone down the right lines so the council know i run a business from home the council have come they know the size of the property i just go through on business rates relief um so as i said your your landlord must know if you're running a business it's the same with your mortgage your mortgage company must know um, and you must be doing it all properly and legally. It's really important to do that because part of your business is you want to be a professional entity. You want to be a professional person and a reliable professional nail tech. And to do that, you need to have everything in your business running correctly. So next we're gonna look at keeping your work and personal life a little separate. So, I think we're going to touch on this again in a later episode, but we're just going to touch on it a little bit in this first one. So it is very easy when you first start out to let it all blur. Let me tell you from someone who let that happen, that then separating it is very, very difficult. So I would really encourage anyone starting out to have in your head where work you so i'm i'm miss lucy at work um but i know where miss lucy stops and lucy takes over um and it's really important to do that not only for your it's, it's more professional but it's also for your it's here for your mental health for your own sake and for your family's sake so when i started out i was a work whore i would say no to nothing <laughs> you want it i'll do it baby um which was fine it did help me build a business very quickly so within six months i was turning people away within another six months so within a year i um basically had to just shut my diary down i just said look i've got my regulars i will have occasional appointments but it's really hard to get on my books but i was a work whore um i was working mobile at the time um and as i said before i'm in a rural location i traveled much further than i should have i wouldn't if you're mobile um, i would consider mileage charges depending on how far you go so i'd say within a 15 mile radius or a 15 minute radius because where i am <laughs> five miles down the road can take half an hour to get to <laughs> so if you say i've got a 15 mile radius you'll be half the way to the biggest town <laughs> in 15 miles but 15 minutes it could take yeah so you've got to think about that as to whether you're going to charge mileage or not um i never did but i think i should have in certain circumstances i would work any time of day or night weekend whatever um and that was great and it really helped me build the business um and luckily when i then got really really busy i could then say right i no longer work sunday or i no longer work this evening and then i just said to people you need to book another day or sorry i can't fit you in what I would encourage you to do when you start out is be as flexible as possible. But so if you've got a partner or another half, husband, wife, whatever, um, and they only have one day off a week, I would really encourage you to make sure that you both have that day off together so that as a couple, you've still got time as your family unit you to spend time with your kids, your pets, your hobbies. Try and make sure that there is one day a week where you can go. No, no, no. 
um, or just half a day, um, you need to make sure that you have time for your family however they be set up like anyone who follows me knows my family is my other half my two dogs and my horse I do not have a traditional family but I need to make time for them so I you know one morning every weekend I spend with Bojack he's my horse I make sure I spend at least three or four hours down there and like yesterday it was spent fixing fences hey but I made sure I kept that time so even if someone said oh is there any chance you could do my nails I said mm, I really can't because if you don't do it then when am I going to do it so you need to make sure you've got in your head what your work-life balance is. But then at the same time, you need to dedicate a lot of time, at the, definitely in the beginning, to your new business. I don't want to work week weekends. I don't want to work evenings. Do many of us, um, you know? That's when my partner's home. That's when I want to, you know, especially in this weather, I just want to snuggle. I just want to do very little. But for the sake of your business, a lot of people, especially with nails, if they're working nine to five and you're working nine to five, you know, <laughs> and then the people with the money. <laughs> so you can't rely on all of your um, income coming from people doing shift work or not working. So do be aware, like, so oh, I don't want to work evenings, but I do one or two evenings a week um, and I do very occasional Saturdays. I don't really say much anymore, but when I started out, I was like, yeah, just suck it up work Saturdays full stop even if you just say I, I will do three appointments and then finish that's fine but I think be flexible but also make sure that you've got to get that balance so if you're going to work a Saturday don't work for Sunday if your other half only has a Monday off try not to work a Monday um you know stuff like that make sure you have a Facebook page now i do not mean a profile because that is like lucy fell is a facebook profile my facebook page is miss lucy's nail artist if anyone comments contacts me so if i mar do any marketing on local selling sites on facebook i have to share it as my lucy's nails profile so when people message me there on messenger i just say can you please just ping a message to the page it will be easier for me to keep in contact with you there thanks stuff like that so make sure that you have work and personal separate because there's nothing worse than people chatting to you on like bubble heads at like 10 o'clock on a saturday night no this is my personal you know to contact me on my business page um and i would encourage most phones allow you to have like a copy and paste or something saved on your clipboard which basically says thank you so much for your message please send all business messages here and then a link to your business page and just leave it at that um my trick with that whenever people message my personal profile and they will just say oh hi can i'd like to book in nails and i just say hi yeah please can you just contact my business page oh yeah i just want to know and i will literally just keep copying and pasting that until they get it <laughs> it's as simple as that or then just ignore the messages look i've told you where to contact me please please go there because the minute you start replying to them and you start talking to them through that that medium they will continue to use it um in the same time like with your working hours be aware so you can turn off notifications on your phone you can put blocking mode i put quiet mode on my phone so after eight o'clock the only notifications i'm getting through are from my favorite contacts or from my personal apps things like that you can turn off notifications it's one of my pet hates on groups when they say oh this woman messaged my business page at midnight last night and she was expecting me to reply and oh and i'm talking to her and you replied you replied the minute you reply if someone messages you at midnight and you reply they're going to assume that's okay so if you're not prepared to be talking to people that late at night don't turn off your notifications deal with them in the morning it really is as simple as that if you can have one work phone and one personal phone that i know is not practical for everyone however you can get very basic phones which literally you can phone text and you probably get like whatsapp and facebook on really basic phone for not very much money you could literally have that as your work phone it can be done if that's not something you're financially able to do at the moment i totally understand but what i would encourage you to do is make sure that you have your working hours and you turn notifications off for your business apps when you're not at work because then people won't if they message you at 10 o'clock at night you can have an automated thing come up on your business page that's another great thing about it you have an automated message and mine just goes hi thanks for your message i'll go back to you as soon as possible or all i reply to within one to two working days something like that so they know that you'll go back to them um, and they're not going well she's read it why isn't she talking to me and you're like well i've read it but it's 10 o'clock on a saturday night and i'm down the pub and i'm not prepared to talk about this right now so yeah 
So that kind of then ties in with setting policies. So setting your policies and working practices are something that I personally think will grow over time. So when I started out, I didn't have the policies I have now and they've just kind of evolved over time. Um, so that does include your working hours. So you will know the days you definitely, I cannot work a Thursday night, I take my little girl swimming. I cannot work a Friday morning I, I go to book club, you know, you, you know the things that you can and you can't do, definitely for sure. And then you can plan your business hours around that. Whether you want to then advertise those business hours, like on your Facebook page or whatever, is entirely up to you or have it set as always open or whatever. So you can be flexible, that's fine. But if there is times that you definitely don't want to work, make sure that you don't. When it comes to setting policies, so simple things like check what your insurance covers. So I personally will not work on people under 16 years of age. My insurance doesn't cover it. It is as simple as that. So basically make sure what your insurance will cover you for and that will help set some of your policies too. If you're working from home, I have strict policies. There are no children. I very rarely let people even bring companions to their appointment because it's quite a small salon. I find it very frustrating when you're working on someone's nails and they're turning, turning. So very rarely do people say, come on, can I bring my friend with me? And I'm like, no, sorry, I'm not set up for that. You've got to talk to me. I'll put the radio on, sometimes I put Netflix on in the background, does it matter? They, you know, I've got Wi-Fi, if they want to sit watching something on their phone, that's fine. Um, even though I do have a, <laughs> I have a no phones policy, more because there's nothing worse than when you're working on someone's hands, having to keep grabbing their hands across the table because they're on their phone. So set your policies how you feel right if you're mobile it's a lot harder when i was mobile i'd go to places and there would be children everywhere getting in my pots getting in my bag oh my god it would drive me nuts it is much harder to set policies like that when you're mobile because you will get to someone's house and you'll go oh you should have got child care they're gonna go well i don't so you either do the nails or you don't um so just you've got to keep them quite specific to your business um, obviously I've got dogs at home so I make sure that new customers I've got like a list and just says you know I've got dogs make sure you're right with dogs because it's their house if you're allergic let me know and um, there's very little I can do about that if you're scared of dogs or anything like that I can put them in another room stuff like that but if you're allergic I, I probably wouldn't come get your nails done from me because I've got dogs um other policies you need to think about is um the whole booking fee thing now that is something I had to bring in just because um, I had a bit of a run of pizza in. people would book and either I'd turn up, I remember turning up one place, it was up three flights of stairs in this block of flats, I'd lugged all my stuff up, um, knocking on the door, I could hear, she was in there and she was like, shh, 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 hiding because she didn't want her nails done. <laughs> <sighs> uh, yeah. And it would have taken a simple text message in the morning just going, oh, I can't afford it today, sorry. Okay, fine. I would have wasted my time and hauled my ass up there, all these stairs. Uh, but yeah, so when it comes to booking fees, I do have a booking fee structure. I ask for 50% up front and that secures your appointment. And then you pay the next 50% at the actual appointment. Um, if you want to move it, uh, oh God, it's all on my website. Um, this You can only move it within a certain amount of, you have to give a certain amount of notice and then it has to be a certain amount of time within the initial booking um and then i also have a cancellation so if you cancel literally an hour before i'm due with you if you ever want an appointment with me again you will have to pay a cancellation fee um no shows are the same you have to pay a cancellation fee you might have to pay up front for other appointments it's entirely up to you if you want to set something like that up um there's a very 50 50 view on it some people are like why well, should i have to pay and then other people are like yeah i mean well, why wouldn't you my argument has always been, if you're booking an appointment and you're going to go to the appointment, does it matter if you pay 50% now and 50% of the appointment? If you're genuinely going to go, I don't think it does. Feel free to have a little look on my website. There's um, on the client info tab, it there has all of my policies, everything like that. If you want to use some of those, that's fine. Um, and that's about it, really. So that I wrangled on. Oh, before editing, this is 45 minutes long, so hopefully I'll do it a bit shorter. But that was your first one. That was just an idea of getting started. Um, so I hope you found some useful information here. I hope there's been some good bits in there for you. Um, I'm going to film some other videos as well, um, looking at like 
all about the money that that's an interesting one and then looking at building a business and your brand and stuff like that um what i will probably do as well after all of that and um, if there's any comments in these videos i'll probably do another video right at the end of all the bits i've missed so if there's anything i've missed in this video please leave a comment below um if it's then going to be answered in another video I will just leave it to be answered in the other video. If it isn't, I will add it onto the list to be added into the All The Bits I've Missed video. So thank you very much for tuning in. As I said, I hope you found this useful and I hope you'll tune in again for the rest of the series and I will see you all soon. Bye.